see very viral right now. I've been manifesting twins. Oh my gosh. So, different framing of Cat Williams is... Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Melanated Married Millionaires in the Making show. King, where can I go to stay connected with us? Y'all can stay tapped into the show at dm4show.com. That's dm4show.com. And you can follow us on Instagram at dm4show. Now, let's get into the episode. Curveball. Oh. What is What scares you about 2024? What scares me about 2024 is getting exactly what I've been working for. Mm, deep. Talk to me so, about that. So... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see? She got into her right. boat. So, I've been working towards, and we've been working towards freeing the king, mm -hmm. right? Me being a full-time entrepreneur, uh, we talk a lot about wealth, entrepreneurship between M4, Play Black Wall Street, and I've always had like a little bit of imposter syndrome when talking about entrepreneurship because I've still had the full-time job mm. while doing it. So that's always been the goal. Like, all right, let's do full-time business. But at the same time, like when we were making that decision to do that leap, it was very stressful to think about relying full time 100 percent on us as entrepreneurs to pay all our bills mm -hmm. um it's pretty not not that it's easy to have a job and, and pay your bills with it but it's it's consistent right it's stable it's clockwork you know as long as you send a couple emails you're on your zoom you're doing your job that's outlined to the t yet that check's coming in right, right? twice a, twice a month same time same place but with business and with Play Black Wall Street, what we've seen is there's a wave yes. to where even when we're doing everything right, even when we're hustling, even when our proposals are good, even when we've hired a full team, even when we're providing a, a dope product, it can still take a lot of time for those POs to come through, for the checks to come through, for people to say yes, for us to get the insurances that we need. Like There's still other variables. Um, so it was giving me a little bit of anxiety and uh un unsettledness to think that we would be fully dependent on our own business mm -hmm. um but i think that's the position that we're at like yeah. where we're in that time to where it's like you need to start making the decision uh, we've been asking to be full-time we've been asking to grow our lit program we've been asking to have team members on our team that are creative and want to to help build this business and i think slowly but surely we're getting literally everything that we're asking for in business um family personally wise we've been asking for kids i've been manifesting twins oh my god so I, what are we are we being honest right here like this is this is the things that i think i've been manifesting and hoping for in life and it's scary to get exactly what you've been hoping for it would be scary this is i like to say this every time this is not an announcement. Oh, no, not at all. Okay. God, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very scary to get that, especially because only one of us is manifesting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so I think that that's kind of what I'm a little scared for. And I don't know if scare is the right word, but I feel like that's the word that I usually associate with this feeling. Mm -hmm. But it's also the same feeling that you get when you're about to get on a roller coaster, mm. right? You're sitting in that line, you you wanted this right you you went to disneyland <laughs> you, waited for, you waited for this you bought the ticket to be in this line but you still have like those butterflies that mm -hmm. scary feeling that exciting feeling and then afterwards it's like that was fun yeah that was great and i, I think that's what 2024 2025 2026 is going to be like we bought our tickets we've been putting in the work we've been standing in this long line of prosperity and entrepreneurship and at this point we just have to ride the ride yeah buckle in yep. hope that we're tall enough and uh just enjoy it yeah. yeah and i think you know a couple of things to keep in mind is one we are both educated so it's like i always <laughs> like to think i always <laughs> like to think absolute worst case scenario that's the way my brain goes i don't necessarily recommend it but that's just where my brain goes absolute worst case scenario when something happens mm -hmm. like if we needed to go get jobs we're both qualified to do so right but that's not going to happen because our business is going to bloom Mm -hmm. and, and yes, only go in this upward direction. Um, another thing to keep in mind is I feel like 
a lot of times when we like start abstaining from things is when we start to see the results, right? Mm -hmm. Even like not directly tied to what we're abstaining from, right? Mm -hmm. So in this Daniel fast, we've seen a lot of good things happen, right? True. A lot of good opportunities and things that we've been waiting for that have happened during this time frame. Mm -hmm. So um, I think sometimes it's like when we let go of those things that feel good, that may feel comfortable, we can welcome in those things that we've been wanting. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe that's a little bit. So I have a, okay. sorry, because you were, you were going to a place that I thought you were going to say. And then I went somewhere else? No, you, you went there. It's just, it didn't sound as eloquent as I wanted it to sound. So I just wanted to, 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 to support, you, you know, we, we both have roles <laughs> in the relationship. <laughs> well, um, make it sound nice. Yeah, yeah. So I think when you let go of things that give you temporary joy, mm -hmm. you make room for things that can give you permanent joy. Mm, that's, that's the vibe that I was getting from what you were saying, right? Yes. When it's the, the food where you, you eat the Chick-fil-A sandwich and you dip it in Chick-fil-A sauce and you get that momentary, mmm, this is so good. But you keep doing that for 10, 20, 30 years, that's high cholesterol, mm -hmm. now you're overweight, and you get all these other things, right? Whereas if you make room for the kale salad, now you have the energy for the public speaking, now you have the energy for the dancing, now you have the energy to play with your kids, you have the flexibility to get on the ground with them, wrestle with your kids, and now that gives you the room for that more permanent joy all throughout life. So if you make, all right, what was it? If you take away the things that you're using for temporary joy, you make room for things that can give you permanent joy. Yes. It's exactly what, what you said. Mm -hmm. Teamwork, y'all. Y'all y'all better find you a partner. <laughs> y'all better find you a partner in 2024 oh. that completes you or amplifies you might be a better one. There you yeah. go. Um, how about you, Queen? Thinking about 2024, yeah. other than the possibility of having twins, what I mean, that really you? is... That's, that's it? That, uh, not the twins specifically, but... Um, you know, this is the year that we're trying to grow our family and that although has been something that we've talked about and manifested mm -hmm. for years, yep. it's scary to think that that time is here. Right. Um, and like we've had the conversation too, but it's like, it's been us two for over a decade. Yep. And so it's just like scary to Damn. think about that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, over a decade. We all in here. Literally. So yeah, we've just spent so much life together. I'm just like, wow, we're gonna welcome in this whole new life, like that's gonna take up so much time and energy. I'm just like, wow, it's gonna be like, it's never just gonna be us two again. Right. That's like exciting, but scary at the same time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at one point you may or may not be outnumbered in our own house. Yeah, likely gonna happen. Mm, mm, mm. Gonna you will never win. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, you will never defeat us. Never. Until we get old and then you're taking care of us. <laughs> um, another curveball for you. How do you feel about Cat Williams in 2023 or 2024? Random. It's very random. But if you've been anywhere, literally on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, radio shows, everybody's talking about Cat Williams because my man started 2024 swinging. Just... And he's very viral right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, what, what, are, what are you thinking? How are you, how are you feeling about Cat Williams in 2024? I'm not going to lie to you. At first, I was questioning a lot of what he was saying. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like more and more people are like, no, like, no, he's telling the truth type mm. of thing. So I'm like, dang, like, there's been, it just makes you think about like the industry, like behind closed doors and like yeah. things you don't see, how it's presented to us as the audience and all buttoned down and, and nice, but like what things are actually happening behind closed doors and how people are painted and all those types of things. So yeah, overall, I think it's, um, it seems like he's trying to like, he's been kind of like the underdog, if you will, in mm. this, in this in that industry and in like the comedy industry. And he's like, now nah, this is my time. This is my year. Mm. I'm gonna air the dirty laundry. I'm gonna, you know, let the truth out and ride the wave type of thing. So I know he's about to do a tour. We tried to get tickets, we couldn't. Sold out. So they of course, I, I think there's, I think he has something in the cooker, whether mm. it's the tour and other things that he wants to do. And I think that this is his opportunity to definitely bring some attention to himself and his brand and, you know, again, all the work that he's been putting in for his business so that it can be his time, his year. Cause yeah, I think he's been, he's been 
like not too much in the limelight in the past couple of years. So he's been, and I think what he's trying to, to show with all these uh, podcast interviews is the fact that he's been very successful. Yes. Like he's saying that he has, I think, 17 specials, which is more than a lot of the, well, the pillar comedians have. Like mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle, dope, doesn't have 17. Kevin Hart, we think, dope, doesn't have 17. Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, RIP, like all these other comedians that are out there that are great top tier, they still don't have as many lives and specials as this person has. Mm -hmm. So I think he's considered the underdog, but from from his standpoint, he's like, I'm I'm the one. Right. I'm, I'm literally the best out here. I have the most specials. I'm doing 100 cities tours. Like, I'm him, and people aren't treating me as him, mm. um, which I think is interesting. Um, but what two things that I have one I need our man Kevin Hart to say something like I don't think he's say something we're so we're huge Kevin Hart fans yeah we've been to three three More lives four lives five, probably five. five we saw him like recently in Orange County Santa Barbara Santa Barbara Sacramento Sacramento and I think there's at least one or two And maybe more. one. We probably, we probably did two in Sacramento. Yeah. So I think we've seen him four times over the past 10 years. We think he's hilarious. Probably our top three comedians. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking for me, Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, and Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor. Depends on how far back I want to be. Y'all let us know what, what are your top three comedians. Uh, for you, who are your top three? Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart. That third one fluctuates. Yeah. I don't know. Cat Williams is 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 up there. Up there. Is up there. Yeah. Um, so is uh, D. L. Hughley. D. L. Funny. Um, Look, find you someone who has a good sense of humor and you can laugh with. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Um, but in general, I feel like I I want to hear something from Kevin Hart because he was saying a lot of stuff about his character and about his career mm -hmm. and me being a Kevin Hart fan, I, I'm thinking, that's not true, Cat. Stop it. Uh, but I'm not hearing anything from Kevin. So right. I'm like, hmm, what's going on? Uh, so yeah, I think that would be nice to hear. But second thing that I'm seeing from this, the interviews is I feel like Hollywood doesn't turn off. No. Right? Like the movies, people play characters and then Obviously, on like the red carpet, when we see them, TMZ, they're playing a character. But I feel like it's always a story and right. they're always framing it the way that they want to frame it. I feel like Cat Williams is coming in showing like, hey, lights, cameras, actions are all over the place. And don't always believe what you're seeing mm -hmm. because it's, it's all Hollywood. It's all a movie. It's all a stand up. It's all a joke, uh, which I feel like is interesting. Uh, but what I do like about this different framing of cat williams is is completely different than stand-up cat williams right stand-up cat cat williams is very energetic he's all over the place his voice is all hot pitch and all, <laughs> all that stuff but then when you listen to the podcast he's very serious right. his voice is a little bit calmer deeper very intellectual mm -hmm. right and i think i like that strong intellectual black man that he's portraying in the podcast and still funny. He's mm -hmm. still cutting jokes. I like that Cat Williams more than stand-up on stage caricature Cat Williams, to my opinion. So you would rather him be the way he is in this interview on stage? Yes. I think that's how Dave Chappelle is. Like, yeah. when Dave Chappelle's on stage, he's chilling. He's himself. Sometimes he has his vape pen. Sometimes he like, oh, hold on a second. Let me go get my cigarette. And he's just mm -hmm. comfortable. Yeah. He's just 100% him, not doing anything extra. Um... And I feel like when Cat Williams is on stage, like he's doing a lot of extra stuff to where it makes the stories believable because I thought Cat Williams was that high energy caricature mm -hmm. that he portrays on stage. Mm -hmm. So and then when you see, oh, this person's getting arrested, oh, he's doing drugs, he's doing all this. It's like, oh, well, that kind of makes, makes it sense. believable. It makes it believable yeah. because of who you portray in movies and who you portray when you're on stage. Mm -hmm. But then when you sit there calm in your right body and mind and you're talking about all these different books you're reading you're talking about philosophers you're talking about the enslavement of black people like you're talking about real serious stuff with a serious tone and still able to be funny why not be that yeah. on stage maybe his maybe that's what he'll maybe yeah, this is kind of the introduction to his new you know performance yeah. uh 
performance Cat mm. Williams that hopefully aligns with this person. That would be mm. nice to see. Because, of course, yeah, now that this video's, video's gone viral, it would be kind of weird to, to see him, back. yeah, come on stage and kind of do his yeah. old character type thing. Mm.